Hello, welcome along to Live On Air this evening. Uh, it's with a lot of pleasure that I've got Catherine Walters and Wesa Nasa with me tonight. And our topic today is thinking about Methodism. Before we begin, I'd like to just ask each participant to say a few words about themselves, starting with Catherine. Well, hi, I'm Catherine Walters, as already introduced. I'm currently the Regional Superintendent for the Central South Highlands Synod, uh, based in Christchurch generally but uh, the region goes from Kaikoura down to Oamaru and across to the middle of the west coast, uh, the Arthur's Pass. So quite a big chunk of land and of course busy with things like rebuilds and finding new ways of expressing Methodism. So keen to talk about the, today's topic. Thanks David for the invite. Catherine, just before we cut to West of Philly, uh, how long does it take you to drive from where you live, out of Christchurch, over to the west coast side um, of the Well, okay, district. so uh, it, the district stops in the middle of between Christchurch and the west coast, so about Arthur's Pass. So it's about two hours from where I live to the central. It's uh, two and a half, three hours down to Oamaru. And if I if we had actually a parish in Kaikoura, it would be about another two hours. So five hours north to south, two and a half hours. So, so you, you've got big driving no matter what you Pretty do. Pretty much. Yeah. 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 Where's Philly? Your, your patch wouldn't be quite as extensive an Iraqi <laughs> parish, yeah, would Good it? evening, everyone. Um, Yes, my name's Wes Feli Unasa. I'm uh, a recently appointed Methodist minister here at the Orake Parish. Uh, well, when I say parish, it's really one congregation, St. Paul's Methodist Church here in Remuera. Um, uh, prior to this year, I was 11 years the University of Auckland Macquarie chaplain. Uh, so quite a big contrast from a something like a 42,000 um, tertiary institution to what would be roughly a um, hundred or so pastoral care list. That's, that's a big jump, isn't it? From 42,000 down to a hundred. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm really interested. Both of you have very uh, distinct views about Methodism. And I'd like to ask Catherine, what interest excites you about contemporary MCNZ scene? Well, I, I think that's the creativity of it all, really, to, to be honest. Um, I'm probably most excited about the new expressions of faith in church. And I'm going to give the example of Rob Ferguson, who's doing chaplaincy to the city in Christchurch. It's a new position, only been going six months. But the conversations that he's had are just phenomenal with everyday people who want to talk about spirituality, want to talk about faith, want to talk about God, but actually don't connect with traditional forms of church. I also like that there is a sense of, there seems to be a, almost a renaissance of passion, purpose, identity around Methodism. Now, I don't know whether that's a unique situation that I find myself in because I happen to be around Christchurch in the central South Island and as a result of the quakes and everything that's emerging out of that, or whether this is a nationwide phenomenon. I'd like to think that it's nationwide and it's not because of the kind of pressures that the earthquake brought about. But I, 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 I sense almost a renaissance or a revolution, but either way, I'm in. You were in Christchurch um, mm -hmm. during the earthquake period yes, and, and before so that I, in the I, ministry. Uh, came down here from Whangarei uh, in 2004. So uh, I, um, I, was, I had a year off from ministry during the uh, 2010 quake. And I had just started, um, actually, two weeks before I'd been inducted into a new parish in Christchurch uh, when the major February one hit. So I'm very aware of the kind of things that 
happen to a people when their spiritual home is simply taken away? And what happens when their own houses are taken away? So it's that whole vulnerability um, that that happens out of the earthquakes that's actually caused a, some really deep reflections and change. We'll wait and see how long the change lasts. Where's Philly? What, what interests and excites you in the contemporary MCNZ scene? Yes, I, I found the question... Um, Quite an interesting one for me because I've only got the university over the last 11 or 12 years to compare what we are doing in the Methodist Church and um, I have found that um, the university was really uh, the sort of the, the thinking leader, uh, one that was engaged with the social issues of marginalized communities in terms of access to tertiary education then you've got the, uh, you know, the poverty issue with students coming in and struggling to meet their academic requirements because of the stresses and the pressures at home and what have you. Um, the work of the Methodist Church it seems an unfair comparison. And, you know, to put it bluntly, I, I have to say, uh, coming back to the Methodist Church is a little bit boring uh, compared to the university. <laughs> But having said that, uh, one thing that <clears throat> did give me some interest was the fact that we are thinking about a Methodist alliance. Now, I don't know where that is heading, but that could potentially be something that I think the Methodist Church can actually make a significant contribution through to some of the big issues that now confront our society. I don't want to spend a lot of time on the negative side of the church. We do need to understand what needs improving and fixing. Uh, I'm wondering, Wes Philly, would you like to just highlight one thing, one area where you think there could be some improvement? Yes. Um, look, I, I think one of the things that I, uh, when I went back to conference this year, after a few years away, I was surprised by the conformist nature of Methodism at that level. Uh, everything seems to get through without any state or critique or question. I think that's a deep issue for us as Methodists, and it's only appearing at the conference level. But it seems to me to be a big issue, not just at conference, but at synods and at the parish level. If we are not prepared uh, as a church to be a bit more critical, to tease out the issues, to debate issues, and debate the, uh, the responses of the method, I think we're in trouble. And I think that's the thing that I think we need to improve. Now, whether that's a systemic issue within the more recent history of Methodism, I'm not sure, but we've got to somehow get out of that and start to actually put some life and energy into what it is that we're doing and how we're doing it and who's doing it. I found conference really difficult. Like you, uh, it was low energy. It was one of the lowest energy conferences that I think I've ever been to. And when I contrast that to, we had had a synod gathering uh, about uh, three weeks prior to conference, where we actually, I'd spent, I'd got all the small reports and I'd, I'd said, we're not going to, you're not going to present them, you're not going to talk about them, they are done. What we're going to talk about are some of the big issues that were coming up at conference, or that were affecting us in our life as a synod. And we had eight hours of rigorous, small group conversation, great debate, great feedback. Everybody, it, it was almost like someone had, had given permission for people to speak and speak honestly. As long as they were respectful, the, anything kind of went. and. What the result was, was this amazingly enlivening conversation 
at, within the synod. I think people have lost some of the skill around debating. I think there's, we're having to relearn how to engage honestly with respect so that we can hear different, so that we can be learning as we go along and fully engaging in the issues that not only, not, not only around the things that we face as a church, but the things that we face as community, the things that we face as a nation, and what how our Christian faith impacts on that. And I, one of the things that I wrote down, David, was learning to embrace passion and encourage and affirm those who do. And I think that's kind of what you're talking about, Oisophilia, as well. There's mm. aspects of that. I want us to be risk takers, but at the same time, good stewards. I think we are on a course of relearning. The, the mood of uh, our country, New Zealand as a whole, is somewhat less engaged uh, than it should be. Is this the result, possibly, of having had, dare I say it, stable government, the, the key national-led uh, coalition stuff in power for so long that, that as a whole society, we're no longer debating issues. Any comments on that? Well, I think we've been so used to being knocked around and told that what we believe um, or the position we take um, is not acceptable. Now, whether that's in the Methodist Church or beyond the Methodist Church, I think there is that sense that power has simply become too powerful or those who may hold a different view or dare to say that they don't believe in what's been proposed by, I suppose, in the language of more recent days, by the establishment. And that, I think, has put people um, in, a, in, a, in a position where either they don't want to be part of it or they don't want to participate in any of the conversation. Now, yes, it doesn't just happen at conference. It happens at Synod. You should come to the Auckland Synod. We run out of business um, just about uh, <laughs> before morning too. Um, but you know these are really critical issues. Yeah, we ca we cancel yeah. synods with yeah. monotonous regularity, yeah. don't we? And it's unbelievable, together, really. Uh, it's a monologue of people who present with very little engagement and uh, conversation to and fro. Now, that is a systemic issue in terms of our Methodist way of doing things these days. But I think it's also a reflection of the society we are in, where to take the alternative view is simply stamped out uh, by those who have the power to do so. Uh, just picking up on the comments that have come through, Peter Lane has said, that there, he thinks there does need to be more debate and, and processing of info, uh, but he doesn't think conference is the best place for that to happen. And I don't personally think Synod is either anymore, but uh, Stuart Mannon says that he finds plenty of critical debate amongst individuals, but a reluctance for this to happen at the upper hierarchy, which, which may explain possibly, Catherine, I, I don't know, I wasn't at conference, don't intend to be, but it may explain that dead feeling that if, if at the very height of the hierarchy they don't want debate, then it's not going to happen. Um, mm -hmm. And Peter Lane says he can come and talk climate change anytime any of us want. So it might pay to get him down into central South Island and um, we, we could do the same up in, in Auckland, I guess. But... Um, the two of you are both in a kind of unique position. I'm retired. Um, I don't want anything to do with the life of the conference, really, or, or necessarily the life of the synod. But I do have a deep interest in how Methodism will develop and grow. And when you've got presbyters of, both of you are long-standing presbyters now who've done ministries in a variety of situations, contexts, um, locally, nationally, etc. You become the change leaders in some ways, but you can only be change leaders in so far as you're encouraged at that upper level to lead change. 
Um, what do you think the church is going to look like in a decade's time? I, I probably will have had my second cabbage, except they don't do them uh, anymore because uh, you don't have a very high survival rate. Uh, but you guys will still be active in ministry. Where do you think our church will be in a decade's time? What will it look like? Well, I, I think we've got a very dangerous situation in the Methodist Church. Um, and that's reflected, one, by the fact that at the highest level where we should be debating within our diversity and within our different positions, whether it's theological, political, social, or economically, we are afraid to debate uh, the issues from where we see the world. Now, that, that I think, is, is a dangerous thing, that we don't accept diversity and difference as much as we would like to think we do in the Methodist Church. The second thing I see as the future of the church is that we are becoming more and more um, ghettos of one, theological positions, and two, ethnic identities. Now, that is evidence in the way we are now choosing leadership within the church. If you are not part of the establishment, you are not going to get the opportunity to put your brand of leadership and skills on offer to the connection. And that, I think, is about killing off any um, sign of life. And life comes because it's different, not always the same thing every year in and out of our, our life. And I think uh, in 10 years' time, we are looking at a church that is one, irrelevant, two, lack energy, and three, small existence of ghettos, both politically, um, theologically. That's and right. <laughs> well, part of me wants to say yes to what Wesafili's said. Um, but actually, uh, over the last, I think since the earthquakes, I've actually become quite an optimist, which is kind of um, counter uh, a personal uh, makeup, really. Um, I think in, in, in a decade's time, I think it'll be actually looking pretty much like it is now. But I think there will be a growing number of people who are choosing to worship and be church together, Methodist church together, in a different play, in a different way. And that will be around things like cafe churches, uh, walking groups, malls, online, David, just like, like this. I think the kind of um, how we understand church is changing. How we understand faith expression is changing. I think it will be more contemplative in spirit and active in all aspects of daily living. I think there will be very few sermons. I think there will be more storytelling, personal sharing, sound bites rather than lectures. I think multimedia will be used much more extensively. I think there will be smaller intimate groups with an occasional larger gathering because that's the kind of thing that I'm seeing that's coming out of that central uh, Christchurch chaplaincy. I'm seeing it happening with um, almost cluster groupings around the eastern suburbs. I think, and I'm but hopeful, I I'm hopeful, Mr. Feely, that we... Yeah? I'm, a, I'm very optimistic about the future of faith. But I'm not very optimistic about the future of the institution that is Methodist Church of, of New Zealand, Te Hahi Wetiriana. Now, when you talk about the issues that you're raising, you know, the optimism around some of the things you've listed, is that looking more within the group that is actually calling itself church? Or are we needing to look at a bigger picture and then be optimistic because our faith has something to speak to and for in the wider society? I mean, I'm all for, you know, storytelling within the four walls of my church. But what happens beyond that? How do we deal with poverty? How do we deal with kids that are confronted by technology? How do we deal with climate change and how it affects it? You know, what is the gospel story to those things beyond the confines of our church walls? But I agree with you. There are some good things happening within the walls of our churches. The bigger question, though, is what are we do what are we doing outside of that, and are we optimistic about that? I, yeah, I I think 
a lot of this stuff comes out of out of the earthquakes because actually everything was taken including the institution because the institution simply was not geared to help us it, it simply it, it became kind of a bane and blessing really and i in terms of the institutional church i think that as these other expressions, these faith expressions, and they, these groups are also talking about the very things that you're talking about, Wisafili, you know, um, about poverty, about uh, domestic violence, about joblessness, about the economy, about the global uh, instability that seems to be, that we're facing at, at the moment. I, th I think what's happening is that people are actually having those conversations in smaller groups to feed into the larger. And I have to say that the, the structure of the Methodist Church has been very gracious when, when I've said, that doesn't work for us. That you know, what can we do, working around it, which is kind of my rebelliousness and that creativeness. But I, I'm hopeful, I am hopeful that it actually goes some way to changing the very institution to becoming, again, a living environment for which we can use to express our faith. If it doesn't serve the local, then it doesn't serve. And that's, that's the the principle of the institution is to serve the local. If it's not doing that, then it should be challenged and changed. Well, that's I think the there's a, a lot in that. <clears throat> and yeah. as I said at the start of the program, if we look at your um, um, bulletin that comes out on a regular basis, there's a, a tremendous vitality and a sense of mm -hmm. purpose uh, happening in, in so many different little areas. And I think that's tremendous. At the same time, yeah. I'm also aware that uh, at least within uh, Pacifica groupings of the church and Te Taha Māori, they wouldn't necessarily see that as vibrancy in the same way that they understand vibrancy. Would I be right in that, Wesafili, that <clears throat> the local isn't always necessarily w what's yeah. what's celebrated? And they're, they're, I think that we haven't even begun, because we are primarily a Pacifica-based church, I don't think we've even begun to understand the dynamics of culture uh, and the pivotal part that, that the different cultures play in the future shaping of the church because i think statistically uh it's really saying that uh, pakiha days are pretty well numbered certainly in auckland uh there can't be more than a couple of hundred pakiha gather across the entire of auckland and maybe a couple of hundred in the manukau synod <clears throat> uh, peter lane would probably have a perspective on that um but uh, Max and Julie have said the potential for connection between parishes without being constrained by synod could be interesting. I think the potential for connection without being constrained by conference, by, by anything, could be interesting and is certainly <laughs> Methodist at heart because of Wesley's famous, you know, the world is my parish. But what will the church look like in a decade's time? Wes Philly, what do you, is it going to be a Pacifica church? Is it going to be a multicultural church? Is it going to be a bicultural church? What's your take on that? Yeah, I, I, um, I, I don't think it'll be a Pakeha church. And I don't think it's going to be dominated by the bicultural issues as important as they are. And I think that's a, a major shift in terms of what has been a Pākehā Māori concern about treaty to a more socially um, uh, justice issues in terms of the migrant community. We are, I think, moving away from the Indigenous and Pākehā 
view of the world as expressed through Methodism to one where a more marginalized migrant perspective of the world uh, will take place. You can see that in Auckland. In our synod, we're trying new things. Uh, but one of the, the my biggest promos is around we have got to learn to celebrate the diversity, to work together. And it's really interesting that I, I was reading Julie's comment about potential for connection between parishes without being constrained by synod. That's exactly what I've been trying to encourage, for parishes to network together, to be supportive of each other. Don't wait for me to do it. Don't wait for the connection to do it. You are the connection. Mm -hmm. Do it. Um, and it's been quite, inter it's been entertaining uh, and it's been challenging, but those who have, have blossomed and cherished it. So in terms of the cross-cultural uh, aspects, we again have been actively pursuing relationships with Sonoti and with Wahafanua and Wasi Wasi Kawiti uh, and with Te Taha Māori because we understand, well, we're, we're get, getting an understanding that actually we're all Methodist. So what does that mean? That actually means we need to be Methodist together, not building those silos. I We've got to start oh, I think that's a place. really interesting perspective. We're getting very close to coming to an end. Uh, West Philly's just coming back in. Could I make the point, though, that <clears throat> recently within uh, my own parish, uh, uh, the East Coast Bays Parish, I, I just asked how many people sitting in the congregation were Methodist. And I think it, there was sort of, I don't know, maybe six, maybe ten. The, the rest were simply there because they had gathered around uh, an institution, a form of church that they enjoyed being at. And one had the distinct impression that if they moved to Whangarei or to Christchurch, they wouldn't actually be interested in necessarily pursuing Methodism. They'd be interested in finding the form of church that most appealed to them. And, and I say but to both of you, thank you very much for joining in. Had a very fruitful discussion indeed.